once again, welcome to Walking Through the Word Ministry, brought to you by Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we're pastored by Reverend Thurman Cunningham Sr. My name is Tyrone Cunningham, and once again, welcome. Hope you had a great day. We're going to jump straight into the lesson tonight. We're going to do a quick recap because there's a lot of things we need to talk about. We're in Divine Despair, the series Divine Despair, and tonight we'll be coming from chapter 5 of Exodus. In its entirety, 1 through 23. Chapter 5 of Exodus, 1 through 23. Last week, Moses had been given instructions to do a certain thing. He had been given instructions by God to go back home where he was a uh, wanted man, a fugitive from justice, for, the, for, the, for the lack of a better word. And he was reluctant initially. But God and he had had a conversation and God had assured him of certain things. Remember that as we go through this lesson. God had shared with him the things that he could look forward to, the things that he needed to do uh, once he got to the place that he was going. Once he went back to Egypt, where he was a wanted man 40 years ago, had killed an Egyptian. But now God had convinced him or God had uh, shared with him that he was with him. That regardless of what was to happen or what was to come to pass, that he was with him. And he told him to go first to his people yeah. and talk to them and share with them that God had heard their groan. God had heard their cry. God had heard their prayers. And that he had sent him to deliver them from the things that they, the oppression that they had found themselves under. And Moses had gone back. He had showed them the signs in which God shared with him to show. And the people believed Moses. Yes. The last verse in the last chapter said the people believed Moses. Mm -hmm. And this last chapter that we were in, 31 verses, the people said they believed Moses. Now Moses and Aaron moved on to a little harder audience than the ones that he had left. And this is where we are tonight. Chapter 5, verse 1. Divine despair. And here we are. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord of God of Israel, Let my people go, that they, may, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. They came and they addressed the Pharaoh, just like God had instructed them to do. Now you have to remember that Moses was dealing with a a little bit more than Aaron was. Aaron was an Israelite. He was under oppression. He was under the same type of bondage that his brethren was in. But Moses was coming back to a familiar place. Right. A place that he left at one time, at one point in his life running from. Yeah. He was a fugitive from justice. So now Moses was coming before Pharaoh, a different Pharaoh. Yeah. But in essence, the same government, the same regime, yeah. and the same court that he had once stood in. He was familiar with the place and the, and the customs and the things that they had, uh, the things that he needed to be aware of. And he, I'm sure, had in the back of his mind, got to walk this walk with me, had in the back of his mind that is anybody here that remember right. me from the time when I left? God had told him that the men that searched him, the men that had sought his life, they were dead. But we're human. And now we're back in a familiar place where we, where we committed a hideous crime. And we, in our mind, have to visualize. Our spiritual mind tells us that Moses possibly had a lot more on his mind than Aaron. All right. It says here, after he talked to the Pharaoh, told the Pharaoh what God said, he and Aaron. And Pharaoh said, who is this Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. God said, let my people go. Let's not get confused. All right, all right. Not Moses' people. Right. Not Aaron's people. But God said, let my people go. He's showing here a possession. He's showing here a kinship. He's showing here that these people that you're holding in bondage, these people who you've oppressed for over 400 years, not you personally, but this government, this regime, this Egypt. It's time 
to let my people go. And this Pharaoh, you have to understand that at this time, the Pharaoh was a deity, meaning almost like a god. He was a person that they respected and revered as though he was God. Right. He wasn't the governor. He wasn't the president. He was somebody that they thought were friends of the gods, all the gods. So for him to ask the question, which God or who God, is not, is not, is not so foreign of a conversation because there were many gods in Egypt. Right. There were many gods that pick a day, right. sun god, tree god. Water God, yeah. rock God, yeah. our God, your God, whichever God you wanted to pray to that particular day, you could. So now you're talking about the children of Israel, God. He says here, and they said, God, and they said, the God of the Hebrew have met with us. Let us go. We pray thee. Three days journey into the death and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest we fall upon, lest he falls upon us with pestilence, or with the sword. Now they are asking an easy thing of Pharaoh. All right. They're not asking him something that they're trying to, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, trick him. All right. God has sent them so that they can ask this easy thing because God has come to deliver them wholeheartedly. But if the Pharaoh wouldn't let them go and praise him or pray to him three days, Certainly, he wouldn't let them go all together. All right, all right. So God would be justified in anything that he did yeah. after the fact. God would be justified in anything that he did after the fact. The children of Israel. Now, this is when the this is when the words you have to listen to. Israel was a person at first. This is the first time in the scripture that they have referred to Israel as a people. Right. Remember, Israel was Jacob. And now he says that the God of Israel right. says to let his people go. He doesn't recognize them. He doesn't pay credence to them. He doesn't give respect to them. They, he asked them, who is this God? Right. And they shared with him in three, and it, and, and it said in four. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore dark do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people, let the people from their work mm -hmm. get you Unto your burden. Who do you think you are? All right. <laughs> Coming before me. Pharaoh. Yeah. Of Egypt. Yeah. God like. Oh, yeah. I'm almost like. To these people. I am. I have a God like status. Yeah. And who do you think you are? Yeah. You should be working. Oh, yeah. You should be with them. And you're coming. You've taken time from your burden. To come to me. To tell me that God, that I don't have it, that I don't even know, that I have no reverence for, that I don't have any respect for, has told you that I have to let them go. Who do you think you are? All right, all right. First of all, my honor has been challenged. And now I'm thinking about not honor, but my prophet. All right, all right. Oh. I let these people go. For five, for three days, imagine the work that I'll miss. Yeah. Imagine the things that they do that won't get done. Mm -hmm. Imagine all these things. Who do you think you are? Moses, El, Hebrew, Israelite, Jew. Mm -hmm. I'm Pharaoh. Five and, and, and Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burden. These people have multiplied. These people have continually grown. Remember, I tried to kill them. We tried to kill them all off some years ago. Because they had grown to such large proportion. They had grown. They had multiplied to such a number that we tried to kill you, Moses. But your mother was shrewd, and she put you in the river floated you down. You're standing here right now because you ran around with the trap that we had set for you. And even after the midwife wouldn't do what we asked him to do, then we started telling all of our people just to throw any boy Hebrew in the river. Yes. And you, a boy Hebrew, standing in front of me, telling me 
when you should be out in the field working, you should be making bread. You are telling me that I have to let my money go. My property. My profit. I got to let them go. Just imagine this scene. Just imagine this situation. Just imagine what you're dealing with. Imagine the, imagine the anger. The fear, remember last, last week when we talked about it, I said, they may go, they may not, but I can't wait to see how the Pharaoh is going to act. Remember I said that yeah. last week? Yeah. I said, we don't know if the Pharaoh is going to want their head. Uh -huh. We don't know if the Pharaoh is going to ultimately kill them for even asking. Yeah. But he's shown here that he's not willing to relent. He's not willing to give in to their request. Six and Pharaoh commanded the same day that the taskmaster of the people and their officers saying, Seven, ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick, as hereto. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. Eight, and the tale of bricks which they did hereto, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish off thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cried saying, let us go and sacrifice to our God. Nine, let their, let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain word. Wow. Not only am I not going to let them go, it seems like they don't have enough to do out there in the field. Uh -huh. Seems like they have too much time talk among themselves. Yeah. Said I wasn't gonna tell this joke. Tell this quick joke. I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna move on. All right. This joke said about this old Baptist preacher back in the day. Said, Master told him, preacher, I need three hundred bells today. Cotton. Yeah. Yeah. Preacher said, if it be the law, we. Uh -huh. He goes out that day. Come back, he found a humbler show. Uh -huh. Master said, Preacher, uh -huh. you, you shorted me yesterday about 100. 100. Uh -huh. uh, I need you to get me 400 tomorrow. Uh -huh. Preacher said, If it's the law, we. Uh -huh. Next day, yeah. go out, short him again. Mm -hmm. So that the next night that he was short, he told him, preach, I tell you one thing, you shorted me three days, I can't let you keep going this way. And he got he, he took out the cat of nine tail. Uh -huh. The whip. Beat it. Uh -huh. Beat the skin off of it. Oh, Laid it on him that night. Yeah. The next day he told the preacher, uh -huh. he said, I need 500 pounds cotton uh -huh. from you today, preacher. Uh -huh. You're going to be able to get it. Preacher said, if it's out there. <laughs> Ain't no more if it's the Lord will. <laughs> if it's out there, I'm gonna get it, now Today, so now this this Pharaoh here has put the same type of situation before these people. Yes, not only am I gonna require you to do the same work, but I'm not gonna give you the help that I gave you initially. Oh, wow. oh. I'm not gonna give you the help. Let the God that you serve uh -huh. help you. With your, with your burden. Yeah, yeah. Let the God that you serve help you get these talent of bricks that you normally would get. And if you don't, there'll be some reprisal. There'll be some retribution. Yeah, yeah. There'll be some punishment doled out. Mm. If you don't, no suffering, no success. Yeah. Remember that. Yes, sir. Says here in 10, and the taskmaster, all the people went out and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Mm -hmm. Let go ye get you straw where you can find it. Yet not all of your work shall be diminished. I need you to go out, find your straw where you can find it. Since Moses and Aaron, bold and bad enough to come before me, the Pharaoh, who I said is equated to almost a god, a deity within itself, they believed that he was friends with the God. Mm -hmm. That to displease Pharaoh, you would be displeasing all these gods that they serve. So it wasn't a directive, it wasn't a it wasn't a constitution, it wasn't a, 
Uh, it, this, this, this wasn't the, uh, a democracy. It was a dictatorship. Uh, and everything uh, that the Pharaoh said, he didn't need anybody to vote on him with it. Yeah. It was law. Yeah. His decrees were just what they were. Uh, but then all but then all over here in Daniel 3 and 17, later on, uh, you had three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There'll be descendants of these people here. All right. It says here, if it be so, and I'm not going to go into what I believe about this scripture. We've had a discussion about this. Daniel 3 and 17, if it be so, talking about throwing them in a fire front because they didn't bow down, they didn't kneel to the God, the statue that he had erected. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning Fire furnace, but you got to read after the come. Right. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, yeah. O king. Not I know he's able, right. but it says he will. Right. Right. I'm confident yeah. that he's going to do it. There's no doubt in my mind. We're going to walk in here with all our confidence, with our shoulders kicked back and our heads high because we know that your, what you think will be our demise will be our deliverance. These people think that they got the upper hand. Don't you know it happens like that every day? People think that they have the upper hand over you because they're in places of authority. They're in places of prestige. They're in places of honor. And they think that you have to bow down. But I serve a God that says, hi, he looks low. I serve a God that protects me all the time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Proverbs 17 and 3. Finding. Finding parties for silver. And the furnace for gold, but the Lord tries to hold. All right, sir. You gotta understand that God goes deeper than man can see. God works in the realm of the impossibility. Yes. God works in the realm of it can't work. All right. But it does yes. with God. Listen at this. Go ye get your straw where you can find it. Ye all not of your work shall be diminished. Twelve. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble in, instead of straw. They went to get stubble. The substitute for the straw that they couldn't find. Thirteen. And the taskmaster hasted then. Herod, saying, fulfill your work, your daily task, as when they were, as when there was straw. Keep doing what you're doing do it quicker, faster. I need this talent that you've been that you were supposed to have brought out, and I don't care how you get it done. I don't care how you get it done. Listen that Lord, listen that God. A way out of no way isn't necessarily scripture, but does anybody know about God? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Being a way out of no way. Oh, yeah. Bridge over troubled water. Oh, yeah. Shelter in the time of storm. Know all about that. And you, know, you can't know about it unless you've been through something. Yeah. You can't know it unless God didn't take you and brought you through some situations that yeah. you've gone through. Yes, sir. Oh, I can tell you about some things. I just ain't got time. All right. All right. I know God is real. And reading these stories only confirm. Reading these lessons only confirm it in my life that God can do all things but faith. <laughs> it says here, the officer in 14, the officers of the children of Israel which Pharaoh's taskmaster had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today? As there too, they beat them, just like they did the old preacher. That's why I told that joke. Now, I'm responsible for you getting the work done. Because you didn't get the work done, I get beat. You turning me against my brother. Can you see how this is relative to where we are right now? That if you promise me that you'll that you'll that you'll for the most part give me some type of reward for getting it done, then I'll treat you. Just like they do. If you promise me that you won't beat me tomorrow, if I get the work done, I'm going to get the work out of them Israelites. 
Them Jews going to get them bricks made. I'm not going to keep going home like this every night. First, you are over them. And I'm pretty sure I had a pretty easy position. Because all you had to do was make sure that the work was getting done. All you had to do was, you know, walk back and forth. You need to get that right there. You know, you need to tighten up a little bit there. You need, you're a little bit behind, brother. You need to hurry up. It's easy to say it with ease and with confidence and with some amount of uh, sensitivity and coolness when the fire ain't hot. But I got beat last night. The day you're going to get them bricks. I like to make everything applicable to where we are. Applicable or however you want to pronounce it. I like to make everything present. We are dealing with so much today. And if we let the powers to be turn us against each other, then it will be a certain demise, a certain, a certain Demise for all of us. All right. Somebody has to stand up and say, we're not going to take it anymore. All right. Somebody's going to have to stand up and say, regardless of what you do to me, I'm not going to mistreat my brother. I don't care how you treat me. I can take it. I can handle it. All right. I'm not going to let you mistreat them because they didn't do anything to deserve it. Moses and Aaron <laughs> went and, and, and told him the, 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 the uh, Pharaoh. Yeah. Think about how they might be thinking now, the folk. Oh, yeah. I wanted us to remember chapter 4, verse 31, the last chapter. They cheered. They all was in agreement when Moses and Aaron told them what they were about to do. God didn't heard your prayer. God didn't heard your groan. God didn't heard your request. God has heard your petition. And he sent us to be your deliverance. Yeah. And everybody cheered. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Alright. You don't believe me. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4, verse 31. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their affliction, they then they bowed their head and worshipped. Yes. They were all on board. Yeah. Everything was all good. It was great. Yeah. We about to get out of this place. After 400 years, the Lord had heard our prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. 15. And also the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh. Mm. Changing, changing plans look like. Mm. Saying, wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servant? You will go to your oppressors. You will go to your punishers. You will go to your slave masters. You will go to your burden givers when the task get hard. When, when time get hard, we'll run straight to the folk that's oppressing us. And tell them, why are you treating them like you treat us? For 400 years, you've been beating us. For 400 years, you've been dealing with us how you wanted to deal with us. We forgot about all the beatings that we took before Moses and Aaron even came in the picture. All of us that then died because of the call, before the call. We forgot about all that. And all we know is that the heat is hot now. All we know is that it's time to get some relief. And the only place that we can go and get the relief in our mind is not to God. You're going to go to man and ask him for the relief that you receive, that you need. Instead of going to God, the one that you cried to, the one that you prayed to, the one that you petitioned, instead of going to him, you're going to the people or the man that's causing your suffering, that's causing your trials, that's causing your tribulation, that's causing you to go through some things. You going to him, that's how we do it. You don't believe me, do you? That's how we do it today. All right. First thing we do is go to the man. Instead of talking to your brother. All right. Instead of saying we need to galvanize this. We need to come together. We need to unify. Yeah. We need to pull together. There's strength in numbers. You've chosen to take the path of least resistance. You think 
You've gone to the Pharaoh, the one that has you in the position that you're in now to give you some relief from what you're going through. Mm -mm, it, sounds, it, sounds, it sounds so scarily like what we go through now. Right. Right. This is what he tells. This is what he tells. 17. But he said, Ye are idle. Say it again. Ye are idle. Mm -hmm. I didn't stutter. He said it twice. Ye yeah. yeah. are idle. Ye yeah. are idle. Therefore ye say, Let us go and go sacrifice to the Lord. 18. Go therefore now and work. For there shall no straw be given you, yet shall ye dip the liver, the tail of bricks. You idle. You ain't got enough to do out there. Yeah. Look at you, you here now, begging me. And you should be out there trying to get your tail, get your tail of our bricks done. All right, all right. You wasting time now. Where is your God? What God? Who are you talking about? You mean to tell me that the God that has kept you in this situation for over 400 years, you're the last in the tail. Remember, you're the bottom in the caste system, in the class system. You're the least of all in this, in this little community that we live in, in this regime, in this government. You're just a slave. You're just a, you're just a piece of uh, a tool. You're a child. You're just like the cow out there. You're just like the goats out there. You're no better, no worse. We can buy and sell you like we want to. We can treat you like we want to. And you talking about, you want me to serve that God? You want me to represent? You want me to respect that God? You want me to reveal that God? And you look at you. Please, Master. Please uh, help us out. You're asking us to do the impossible. No way. Give us some relief. And he's laughing. Ha, 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 ha. You're idle. You ain't got enough to do. What's that move? What's that move with Eddie Murphy and them? Boss he ain't working. Like it. Boss he ain't working. Lord have mercy. Isn't that so? 19 and all the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case. After it was said, ye shall not minish out from your brick, your daily task. 20. This is what this is what this is the part that sort of, if you if it wasn't so pitiful, it'd be fun. Uh -huh. And they met Moses and Aaron, who stood the way, stood in the way, as they came forth from Pharaoh. 21. And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge. Because you have made our Savior, you have made, you have made our Savior be a boy mm. in the eyes of Pharaoh yeah. and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. Mm. Whoo! Mm. It ain't easy stepping out, being out front. Believe it or not, I watched a documentary and I read book after book about the civil rights struggle. Everybody wasn't on Martin Luther King's side. Everybody wasn't in favor of the movement. Black people I'm talking about. Everybody wasn't saying, sit down, Rosa. Stay in your place. Everybody wasn't saying, you know, I'll go to jail today. Like a lot of the uh, college students and even high school and, and students were doing. A lot of older people were saying, he needs to shut up. We got it pretty good. Ryan him. Mr. Sister Sister one let me use the tractor whenever. I asked him. All I got to do is ply his field first. Right. He don't need to worry about drinking in no water fountain that they drinking out of going to no school they going to doing the stuff that they doing. We don't need to worry about going to no store. We do just fine in our own community. Yeah, yeah. Not saying that we didn't. All right. Not saying that we weren't self-sufficient. Not saying that we didn't do the things that we needed to do. Well, the, the, my, the patriarchs. Because I didn't live in that particular time. All right. 
But a lot of people felt like Martin Luther King was rebellious, felt like he was a communist, felt like he was in favor of all of us. He should have took a vote before he started this movement. And I would have told him that I'm all right where I am. This is Moses and Aaron. See how I'm trying to bring it together. These people have told him, judge, God is going to judge you, boys. God is going to judge you first because in actuality, it's because of you we're going through all this. Wow. Imagine that. Wow. I, had a, I had a home. I had, a ch I had children. I had a wife. I was minding my own business. I hadn't bothered anybody. Saw a burning bush. God spoke to me. He convinced me to come down here. He wants me to talk to the Pharaoh to deliver you people. And now y'all want to kill me. Now y'all praying to the Lord, take me out the way. That's what they mean when they say God judge. To be a leader isn't all it cracked up. It isn't all it's cracked up to be. To lead the people, you got to love the people. Yeah, yeah. To lead the people, you have to love the people because you have some people that's just mean. You got some people that just not going to act right. You got some people that just don't go that way because you say go the other way. All right, all right. Moses hadn't gotten into the real part of his job yet. Yeah. His calling. His commission from God. He's just trying to get the, he's just trying to get the car started. He hasn't started driving anywhere yet. He's still under the hood trying to make sure everything where it should be before he can actually move. Have a long way to go. It said here in 22, and Moses returned unto, God, unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil and treated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? 23, for since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he has done evil to the, this people. All right. Neither have thou delivered thy people at all. Mm. You hadn't done anything, Lord. Mm. I've done everything that you've asked of me. And these are the results that I'm getting. I haven't received anything that you said. Oh, but he did. God told him that people would receive. Right. He said that Pharaoh would. Right. He drew the map. Yeah. God said in previous chapters yeah. Yeah. that the Israelites would receive you. Yeah. They did. Yeah. He said that the Pharaoh would. Yeah. He said that he would harden Pharaoh's heart. Oh, yeah. We have to share in the suffering. If you don't go through something, then the then the coming out isn't as glorious. All right, all right, all right. John 16, 33. These things have, this is years, thousands of years down the way. We're about to end this thing. All right. These things I have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Yeah. He has told these people earlier on, Abraham, how many years they would stay where they are. Yeah. He told them 400 years. Your people would stay in a strange land and they would be on the bondage. That they would, he told your predecessor. All right. He told your great grandfather that this would happen. And it happened just like he said, but he said that you would come out. And he said that you would be more wealthy, that you would come out with abundance. He said that you would come out with more than you went in with. All right. God shared that with him. You're going through something, somebody that's watching right now. Yeah. You're going through a situation that it seems like you'll never come out of. Right. Seems like the cloud will never lift. Mm -hmm. Seems like the day will never come. But Jesus said, these things. Tribulations will come. But be of good cheer. Yeah. For he's overcome the world. Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold I have refined thee. But not with silver. I have chosen thee. In the furnace of affliction. Yeah. 
God purges us. Yes, sir. God purges us. God purifies us. God purposes us in the fire of affliction. Mm -hmm. If you don't go through something, you don't realize what it is on the other side. All right. You can't be a testimony because you haven't had a test. Yes. These people will be a testament for all those that will come out there. Yes. If they get out. Yeah. Because they're acting crazy. These people have told the Lord to judge Moses. And Moses and Aaron only did what God shared with them. Yeah. Now Moses has gone to God where he should have gone. Yeah. Yeah. And asked him why. Is Moses about to give up? Has Moses thrown his hand up in that? All right, all right. Has Moses said, I'm sick of this? I'm tired of this? I'm going back to Midian where my wife and my two children, my father-in-law, they treated me just like a father-in-law should treat me. Back and shepherd his flock where I didn't have no trouble, I didn't have no problem. Will he go back to less things? Will he go back? To where he came from. The path of least resistance. Where he didn't have any trouble. He didn't have any triumphs either. But he didn't have any trouble. Will Moses persevere? Will Moses pursue the commission? Or will Moses just say? Because it'd be easy to do. I'm tired of this. I don't even know these people. These people are half the people that I left gone. Will Moses stay the course? Do you want to know? Would you like to find out? Are you eager to know what's going to happen next? Come back next week. You got to come back next week. We're going to find out what Moses did next week. We're going to find out which direction Moses went next week. But that's not going to be the end of the journey because we got a long way to go. And we're gonna have we're gonna have we're gonna learn as we go, we're gonna understand better as we go, we're gonna be encouraged, we're gonna be empowered, we're gonna be inspired, we're gonna be motivated yes, to run this race because it's not gonna always be easy, but it's gonna be worth it. Yes, Let's pray about it. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you for the time we spent walking through the word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the people, and we thank you for the experiences that they've gone through, Lord. And we thank you for all the lessons that we'll learn, Lord, as we talk about and as we expound upon your word. As the word empowers us, as the word engulfs us, as the word gets in us, Lord, and empowers us to go outside these walls, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you give us the will, that you give us the understanding, you give us the knowledge, and you give us the wisdom to know how to face the challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. Lord, that we trust in you, leaning not to our own, our own understanding, but Lord, acknowledging you in all our ways, Lord, and praying that you direct our path because you say you would. Lord, we trust you, we believe in you, Lord, we can't make it without you. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your unbraided and unadulterated word. We thank you, Lord, for, Lord, yes, the things that yes. you've shared with us, Lord, through these men and these women, Lord, that we'll learn about in the days to come. Ask for this ministry to continually grow. Ask for this ministry to continually do that that you commissioned it to do, that you've ordained it to do. Lord, bless all around us. I pray, Lord, for, pray, for traveling grace and destination mercy for those that are here. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Give you all the honor and the glory for you deserve it. Amen and thank God. And as always, respect yourself. In 